What is up guys? It is Joe here from Joe Talks Wrestling and today I am bringing you all a guide, step-by-step, -step, informative kind of video about the WWE Thunderdome. Now, I have been fortunate enough to get into the Thunderdome on two separate occasions. The first time was for the Go Home Smackdown before Hell in a Cell on the 23rd of October 2020. And the second time was for the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view on the 25th. Both times I was featured on the hard camera, the main camera angle, in the front row on the top panel. So you can see me. I am pretty much main camera both shows at different times. Sometimes I'm there, sometimes I'm not. Uh, they do tend to switch you up a bit, but for pretty much a whole segment or a whole match of the show, I have been up front. So, I'm going to teach you guys today, one, how to register to the Thunderdome, uh, how all the, you know, getting onto the actual Thunderdome works, because I know a lot of people always miss the registration uh, or they miss their slot. I'm um, going to be talking about all of that. Two, your setup that you should have in the Thunderdome. So how you should have a background, uh, what the background should look like, how it should be uh, quite well lit, um, what you should be wearing, you know, all stuff like that. And then finally, we're gonna be talking about how you guys can actually get on camera, front row, hard cam, wherever. Uh, this isn't 100%, but this is how I did it. Um, and this is the most likely way you're gonna get up on the camera. So, without further ado, let's get right into step number one, which is how to register. Okay, ladies and gents, I'm sitting this side of my screen because I'm hopefully gonna put some screenshots here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Now, it depends on the day, but normally three days before that specific show, so three days before Raw, three days before SmackDown, three days before Hell in a Cell, WWE post on their Instagram um, the WWE Thunderdome Register Now post. Now, what this post is, is essentially informing everyone that the Thunderdome is open. So, what you've got to do, uh, for me, UK, it's normally 5pm um, whenever they post it. So, if you're wanting to get on the Thunderdome on that specific day, figure out which day it's going to be on. Then wait till 5 p.m. and just refresh WWE's page until that Thunderdome link comes up. Uh, what that will say is normally link in the Instagram bio, click it, and you're on the Thunderdome website. From there, all you have to do is enter in your first name, last name, your email, you know, all of the important information that WWE would need. Uh, there is some something there that says, you know, uh, like terms and conditions and stuff. You've got to sign with your full name and then just register. And if you've got there early enough, you should get a little notification saying, thanks for registering, we will email you with further confirmation, which means, ladies and gentlemen, you have indeed secured your spot in the Thunderdome. That is the hardest part done. It gets easier from here. Don't get me wrong, it's still quite confusing, but it gets a lot easier from here. So what happens now is WWE will send you a confirmation email with a call time what this is is essentially a confirmation email saying yes you are in the thunderdome and what we're going to do is give you a certain time that you have to log on so it could be 7 30 et it could be 5 p.m et uh it, we don't know so you know if you're everywhere in the world it's going to be an et uh, so just convert that time into your time zone so for the uk all i do is uh, go on Google and look up 7.30 p.m. ET in UK time and it would tell me. Um, so that's what you've got to do to figure out the call times if you're not from that time zone. However, if you are, you know, you're lucky. But what that call time is, is essentially the time that you have to be on the Thunderdome. So the day of the Thunderdome day, pay-per-view, show, whatever you want to call it, comes and say it's Smackdown, it's on a Friday. Around probably 6 p.m. for me, uh, the show wouldn't start until midnight over here in the UK. At around 6 p.m., I receive a brand new email from WWE saying, you will as well. Uh, and what this will have is a little thing that says, click this link to enter the Thunderdome. Don't click it yet. Do not click that link. Do you hear me? Do not click it. It's a one-time only link, meaning if you click it now, you're screwed. You, lo you lose your spot in the Thunderdome because that link is one time only. Look at the call time on the new email. Sometimes it's updated, nine times out of 10 it's the same, but look at that call time and then at that time, click the link. So if it was 7.30, 
for you guys in America. You had the link, you refresh your phone until 7.29, you wait one more minute, exactly, exact second that clock changes, press it. 7.30 comes, press it. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a few seconds behind, but if you really want to get in, no worries, first try, you have to be there at exactly the time the minute changes to 7.30 on that call time. It's very confusing, I know, but hopefully you guys are staying with me. Click that link, you should get something basically come up saying, you know, do not refresh. It says, don't refresh your page. Uh, don't do that yet. And essentially, it will say, click here to enter the Thunderdome. You click, and um, sometimes, if you're lucky enough, it will say, like, you know, you're in the Thunderdome. But other times, it doesn't. Sometimes it will say, you know, thank you for registering, Thunderdome full, come on next time. So that gets people really sad. But it is not over yet for you people, okay? This is the bit that a lot of people don't realize. So this is like not quite common knowledge for you people out there. When that happens, sometimes you have to just give it a minute or so. Um, say, I mean, it can work. I've seen cases of it work for probably about 10, 15, 20 minutes afterwards. So you've got a lot of time, but what WWE are essentially doing is they're filling up the Thunderdome. They're getting as many people in, they're trying to get full capacity crowd for the Thunderdome for that show. But sometimes people drop out for certain reasons, sometimes things go wrong, WWE have to kick people because their camera quality isn't good or they're not really expressive or something like that. So refresh that link. Although it says do not refresh, refresh and click the link again. You can get in. This happened to me on SmackDown. This happened to me. I thought I was out and thankfully, uh, I got messaged by loads of people saying, refresh the page, which I did, and boom, I was in. And I was in the Thunderdome for the whole show. So, ladies and gents, that is the setting up process for the Thunderdome. Let's move on to some little points I want to talk about uh, what actually happens when you're in the Thunderdome when you first get there. Okay, so when you're in the Thunderdome, the first half an hour to an hour is actually really boring. Um, there's nothing on screen other than a moving graphic that says Thunderdome. And what this is, is this is still filling up time. So this is still time where WWE are, what I can only believe is filling up the Thunderdome and looking at everyone who's in it, looking at their cameras, looking at who they are, making sure they don't have anything like rude on their shirts or they don't have anything bad in the background. You know, just, just checking over everything before showtime starts. So this is really boring. Don't go anywhere. You have to sit in front of your camera for this whole time period. Don't go downstairs and make dinner whilst you're waiting because they'll kick you. So you have to wait. And then after that waiting period happens, you finally uh, get a producer in your ear. You hear a producer saying, you know, welcome to the Thunderdome. And uh, it's this one guy, it's always the same guy, and he's always telling you, you know, welcome to the Thunderdome, I wanna see lots of energy. He gives you um, he gives you like a rundown of things that like you shouldn't do, so no like drinking, no vaping, uh, no like PPE masks, no rude shirts, no swearing, nothing, you know, all of common, just common sense stuff really that you shouldn't be doing if you're on there. Um, he'll talk to you for a bit and he's going to be the voice in your ear for the rest of the night. So when there's coming, like when you're coming off of ad breaks, when, you know, uh, they want you to react a certain way, he'll be the one that tells you. So say, for example, Roman Reigns coming out in three seconds, big boos, give us big boos. And then everyone in the Thunderdome would be like, boo, as Roman comes out. It's not complicated. So once you're in the Thunderdome, you watch the show as normal. It's just every now and then he might chime in to say something. From my experience, he didn't get involved in the matches very much. At Hell in a Cell in particular, after Roman Reigns um, started whipping Jey Uso with the strap, he was telling us to boo. He said, uh, Roman's got the strap, boo guys, show like, you know, boo. Uh, so he did talk a bit in some matches, but not a lot. The experience is still enjoyable. It's almost like at certain points you, you do forget he, that he is there. 
so yeah, that's how the Thunderdome works, essentially. That's how you register, that's how you get in, you watch the show as normal, on the device that you are on the Thunderdome with, on a, on a stream that's behind it, you'll be in a little box in the corner. Uh, I'm sure I can find a photo, I didn't take any screenshots, but I'm sure I can find a photo. Um, I think I may have taken a photo on a separate device of myself, so if I still have that, I will put that on screen just to show you what the actual uh, camera setup looks like. And yeah, without further ado, guys, I think I've covered pretty much everything you need to know about being in the Thunderdome and getting in the Thunderdome. Let's talk about the actual setup you should have to have the best experience on the Thunderdome. For that, we need to move rooms. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this is the room that I was in for the Thunderdome on Friday and on Sunday for Smackdown and Hell in a Cell. Essentially, what this is, is just a plain white wall. You don't really want too many things in the background that would distract uh, you or distract the audience's like view of you, I guess you could say. So in my bedroom, as you can see, there's loads of posters, so it wouldn't be very efficient because they'd be drawn away from me by my background, if that makes any sense. Uh, if you can see right here, I have a little homemade Hell in a Cell poster that I made and put on the wall, uh, just for extra effect. I have a Smackdown one as well that I also made. And essentially, what I was doing is I had my uh, chair that's currently in my bedroom that I was sitting in literally two seconds ago for you guys. Uh, that was literally situated here. And I'm just gonna cut quickly and put you in a tripod and I will show you exactly what my Thunderdome setup was. Okay, so I'm not in my chair, I'm on my knees currently, but this is what the camera angle was. I also did have a little lighting setup. Now they say they don't want too many harsh lights for uh, like on your face for shadows and stuff, but working with lighting a lot at college, which I did as I was a TV and film student, uh, I know how to set up lighting to the point where it's not terrible. Uh, it's not fantastic because I only have one light, but it's not shocking. So I'm going to flick it on right now. This is what you saw, okay? So this side of my face is more lit up than this side, but this side isn't darkened out either. I did have to faff around with the lighting to get it in a good position because when you're messing with lighting, sometimes, you know, you're, you're darkened out. Your features are too dark. You can't tell. But that's what I had. I had that this light on. You can sort of see the shadow behind me, but it's not too clear on camera and it just makes up for a better setup. So what you will see is literally like a box of me. Uh, so all of this side stuff from probably here outwards is gone. You don't see any of this. It's literally just you. Uh, on screen, they have a, in the side, the little square, they have like little outlines of where they want your head and shoulders to be situated. But yeah, this is how I was sat. This is my setup, just literally a plain blank wall. I've got a little Hell in a Cell poster just to, you know, show which event I'm in the crowd for. Uh, a little lighting setup, and I'll just switch to back camera quickly and show you exactly what my phone, uh, which I was using, is situated on, as well as where my lighting uh, lamp is. So this is literally it, guys. It's on a steel chair, uh, a tripod, and literally there's my lamp. And then from this perspective, I turn you around, and here we see, if I back up a bit, I literally had my chair there and I was sitting in front of that wall. That is essentially it. Just wanted to mention as well, ladies and gentlemen, whilst I'm editing the video, I realise I haven't actually mentioned what to wear. Um, if you've got WWE merchandise, wear it. It is much preferred. They like you to wear the Superstars t-shirts, the WWE officially licensed merchandise. AEW t-shirts, all stuff like that. I wouldn't recommend. They can kick you out for wearing third party, uh, non WWE items. However, normal clothes, uh, such as just a, this hoodie, you know, stuff like that you can wear, just everyday clothes. I would recommend wearing something bright, maybe even a hat so you're easily noticeable in the Thunderdome. Let's move on. Now we move on to the final step or final section of the video, which is how to act on camera as well as how to get put on the hard cam. Now, I had an incident uh, that went wrong uh, during my SmackDown Thunderdome experience, which was my stream's audio cut out completely. I've seen other people say this has happened, not many, but some, the audio on the stream disappears. You can't hear anything, which sucks because you can't hear what any of the wrestlers are saying. You can't hear what the producer is saying, which is one of the probably most important parts. 
and you can't refresh the stream because you will kick yourself out. That is not good, but if you are in that situation, before we move on to the final uh, section, if you are in that situation, my advice, what I did, just watch everyone else in the crowd. Watch what they're doing, because nine times out of 10, if they're being really overdramatic, like, yeah, or boo, the producer has told them to do that. If a lot of them are doing it, that's what the producer said, so just do it as well. Uh, and that way it looks like you're not ignoring what the producer's saying. And if you ignore the producer, they'll probably kick you out. So just, just roll with it. If you can't hear anything, just be very observant as to what everyone else in the dome is doing and try and copy them. But how to act on camera. So following on from that point, I previously mentioned just now, uh, the producers tell you to act like, yeah, or boo. What they will do is they'll say, you know, bring lots of energy. If they come from an ad break and they're uh, switching to a wide angled shot of the crowd, they will want you all to be there with lots of energy. You can't be heard in the Thunderdome. There's no audio. Uh, they can't hear you, you can hear them. That's how it works. So it's no use sitting there going like this. Boo, I hate you, Roman Reigns. They can't hear that. You need to be boo, boo, when Roman comes on. Yes, you do look like a complete idiot sometimes, but that is how you get on camera. If you wanna get on the hard camera, you need to be overly expressive. You need to show exactly how you feel. And when it comes to wrestling pay-per-views, I act like this anyway. That's just who I am as a person. I get so invested in WWE shows that nine times out of 10, if I'm reacting like, oh my God, it's genuine. So the Thunderdome is very good for people like me because that is our reaction. I have a very expressive face. I'm very expressive with my hands. If you're one of them people that just sort of sits there like this, You're not going to have a good time in the Thunderdome, quite honestly. You'll probably get kicked out. So be expressive. That is what I am trying to tell you. Most importantly, you have to be expressive. And that, ladies and gents, is how you get put on the hard cam. It's as simple as that. If you're expressive much more than everyone else, WWE cameramen and WWE producers and backstage staff are going to notice that. See how you're acting and they're going to want you on camera for them big shots. When you're on the hard cam, Drew McIntyre hits a claymore. They're not going to want someone in the background sitting there looking disinterested. If McIntyre hits a claymore, they want to see you in the background going, Oh, claymore! So be expressive. It's really simple. Honestly, I, I, it's really simple, ladies and gentlemen. So if as long as you're expressive... I can't guarantee you will be put on the hard cam. This is not what this video is. I'm not going to write 100% guaranteed in the title because that would be clickbait. I'm just telling you, if you really want a good high chance of getting put on the hard camera right in the center of the Thunderdome, possibly even the front row like I was, then you're going to need to act really expressive and be really into the match into the show into everything show that you want to be there show that you want to be in the front row because nine times out of ten they will notice that and when they notice that they will reward you with them good positions on camera because you are acting like that it's as simple as that you're acting good for their show they'll put you on their show so i don't really have much else to say about the thunderdome any questions you guys have, feel free to ask. I consider myself quite a Thunderdome expert at this point. I know I've only been on twice, uh, but I ran into so many issues in them two times that I actually did overcome. So it's quite likely that you guys will possibly run into the same issues, such as the audio cutting out or not being able to get in. Uh, so let me know. If you've got any Thunderdome questions, Comment them down below. I will do my best to answer all of them. I've been Joe from Joe Talks Wrestling. You guys have been awesome. Let me know, have you guys been in the Thunderdome before? If so, which show was it on? Once again, ladies and gents, please be sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the Thunderdome.